What's going on everybody? Welcome back, hope you're doing well. Um, today is the start of something that I wasn't sure I would be able to bring you or want to bring you. So if you've watched the channel before, I've been doing my Get Decked Scarlet and Violet era series where I open an Elite Trainer box of each Scarlet and Violet set in order, make a deck out of the cards, and then add to that deck in subsequent episodes. I bring it to playtest with my son, and then I give the deck a rating based on its consistency, its power, and its synergy. It's been hard to make it work with just nine packs from each set, but um, the deck's done pretty well, I think all things considered. But today, I'm bringing you the Get Decked Sword and Shield era series. This is going to be more of a mini-series because there are only six sets in the Sword and Shield era that are still part of legal standard formatting, being Crown Zenith, Silver Tempest, Lost Origin, Brilliant Stars, Astral Radiance, and Pokemon Go, if you want to call Pokemon Go a TCG set. I mean, outside of, like, Pokestop and Snorlax, it's worthless. Anyways, here's the hookup about the Sword and Shield era with Pokemon cards. In Scarlet and Violet, I can pull an EX, and I have a decent odds of pulling either a basic EX that has no evolutions, or I may have to end up pulling a Stage 1 or Stage 2, and I only need one other Pokemon. The issue with Sword and Shield is that if I want to be able to use a V-Star or V-Max Pokemon, I need to pull the regular V and the V-Star or V-Max. The problem there is, with only 6 sets to open, and more difficult pull rates, stingier pull rates I guess you'd call. The likelihood that I get, like, a Giratina V and Giratina V-Star is incredibly unlikely. So there's a good chance that this deck needs to be way off meta in order to succeed. Where Scarlet and Violet, I was kind of able to put together a Gardevoir EX deck. And if you haven't watched that series, what the hell are you doing here? Like, go in the description, watch the series, get caught up, and then, you know, dive in with Sword and Shield. I guess you can do the opposite. I don't know. It's a free world. Maybe. What we're going to do today is we're going to start from the bottom of Sword and Shield. We are going to start with our Elite Trainer Box of the Crown Zenith, which is my personal favorite set to open these days. Um, and then we're going to work backwards all the way to the last oldest standard rotation F set that's in formatting. So I'll have six videos coming for you while we wait for Surging Sparks and other um, Scarlet and Violet era expansions. So, let's have some fun with this, you know, let's see if Sword and Shield still got it, or if it's really just, you know, if Power Creep has gone too far. But, without any further ado, we're going to rip the 10 packs, I'm going to put together a deck profile, we're going to bring it to the ladder on Pokemon TCG Live, we'll give it a final grade, and we'll see how we do. Alright, we've got our packs, we've got our promo, being the Lucario V-Star. Hey, if I pull a Lucario V, like... If that's what I gotta do to build a deck, that's what I gotta do, you know? But, um, here's your code card for the box, if you're interested. But, before I jump in here, I've chosen Crown Zenith, and I've chosen to go backwards for a couple of reasons. Number one being, Crown Zenith has 10 packs to an Elite Trainer box, whereas other Scarlet and... Or, I'm gonna say that every time. Other Sword and Shield sets only have 8. So, the extra two packs help for a little bit of consistency. And... Second reason, this set is to Sword and Shield what Scarlet and Violet base is to the Scarlet and Violet era. This is where I'm going to find like Ultra Balls, Lost Vacuums, you know, this is where I'm more likely to find useful supporters, and I think Crown Zenith is a better place to start than friggin' Pokemon Go. Like, I can't build a deck from Pokemon Go packs, let's be serious. So, alright, that being said, we're going to dive in. Um, I may have mentioned before in the intro, but Crown Zenith is my favorite set to open. I love this set. Only problem being, after all that I've opened, haven't seen any gold cards yet. So maybe today's my day. But jumping in, we got Coughing, Salandit, Purloin, Grubbin, Skrelt, we got the Marit, and we've got Agron. Any good trainers? Eh, the friends may be okay. All right. So, not the best start, but not the worst. I'm actually going to take a second to zoom in here. I hope that's out. That's a little better. 
All right, pull our sleeves off. And then another issue with Crown Zenith and actually all of the Sword and Shield sets with these Galarian Galleries, this Mareep is not even in format anymore. I know it's gonna be tough. It's My camera's not gonna wanna focus. But um, down here is the letter E and um, E format cards are no longer part of the standard legal format. So I can't use it in a deck. But anyway, we got our first pack down, we got our first pull. On we go. We got Violu, Young Goose, Cherubi, Starly. We got a switch, which is good. Energy Retrieval, which is better. Uh, Luxray. We got a rare candy and tracking. All right, and we already got like Luxray and Luxio. All right. Um, no pulls, but that's why we're opening Crown Zenith because I just got like three or four trainer cards that are almost universally useful in decks, especially when there are few options. Um, seeing any of those cards was good news. There's your code. All right, we got Cricketot, Chatot. Mr. Mime, Sunkern, Bidoof, I would love to find the barrel later on, um, a Tang, and Lycanroc. Another another couple good trainers though. Trainer that I will say, after having done this 10 times with Scarlet and Violet era sets, trainers are the hardest thing to come by. You know, your EX Pokemon, you'll see your fair share of, you know, with a little bit of variance. Um, trainers are such a commodity in this series because you just don't find much in a lot of sets. But we've got Helioptile, Wooloo, Shinx, there's our Luxray line complete, Pancham, Snorunt, a Pokeball, and Snorlax. No, no good trainers in that one, but can't expect a lot. What's weird is that now I've opened four packs of Crown Zenith and I only have one Galarian Gallery pull to show from it. Not even like a V or, you know, other common kind of Galarian gallery kind of pulls, but who knows? Maybe the second half of the box will be a little heavy. But we got Execute, Live, Laugh, Love Disc, Baby, Emolga, I see something there, Yanma, Pawneard, oh, we got um, Magmortar. I think I have that already in like my personal collection, but we got more trekking shoes. We got another Luxio. Um, this card is actually in format, so you know, it's in theory, this could make the deck. Should we decide to go that route? I guess, should I get a Magmar? Maybe I already have, I don't know. But that's off to the side. So we are already halfway through these packs, which is unfortunate. I could open Crown Zenith all friggin' day. But uh, you know, we've got other stuff to do with the sets and the packs. So we've got Coughing, Salandit, Purloin, oh no. All right, I'm putting it down. I haven't had a camera hiccup in so long. All right, we got Coughing, Salandit, Purloin, Grubbin. I think I see something back there. We got Skrelt, Orangaroo, and oh, we got the Mew V. Okay, um, E-Switch, which is good. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> this card's actually out of format. I didn't realize that there would be Vs in like other non-Galarian gallery cards in this set that aren't in format anymore, but um, I can't use that Mew. Yeah, and I should have known that, I guess. It's the Fusion Strike Mew. And I don't think I have any potential in this series to pull a Mew VMAX. Like, I don't think there's anything in those sets. I know it's Fusion Strike that has the Mew VMAX. But hey, um, we're back. We got Riolu, Young Goose, Cherubi, Starly, another Switch, Hop, Oh wow, two hops, neat. And then another rare candy, which I guess could help. See, this is the worst box of Crown Zenith I've probably ever opened. With just two, two like lower tier Galarian Gallery cards and a Mew V. These last three packs gotta be uh, helpful. Um, we'll take another Shinx. You know, we got our Luxray, Larvesta. There's something else back there. I think it's like a Vmax, Corefish, Sunkern. Another Bidoof, another Luxio, and the Rayquaza VMAX, which is, once again, out of format. Shit. 
Pokemon catcher. Cool. All right. So right now it looks like we're building a friggin' Luxray deck with a bunch of decent trainers and no Pokemon. No Vs to speak of. And you know, I thought there's no way this series, like there's no way Sword and Shield is stingier than my Scarlet and some of my Scarlet and Violet sets. Like I've been fleeced by Stellar Crown and everyone else is like having a great time with Stellar Crown. So my thought was, yeah, I gotta be due for something good. You know, there's no way so, um, Crown Zenith screws me over like that. Here we are, two packs left, getting screwed over. But we've got a potion. We've got Auron, Corefish, Energy Search, which is okay, a Scyther. We got Irida, actually. I mean, if any water type Pokemon go in the deck, Irida's great. I also don't have this card in my Galarian Gallery collection. So, another E Switch. So, I'm not mad. That actually might be, you know, probably the best supporter I've pulled today. I just don't know if I'm going to have enough water Pokemon to put in the deck. Because this is our last pack. And I don't, I don't, I can't recall any good water Pokemon other than like. Corefish. I'm not going to put just Corefish in the deck, because that would be irresponsible of me. Alright, last pack. We need some magic here. We got Chatot, Mr. Mime, Baltoy, Meowth, there's another Galarian Gallery, Energy Switch, Energy Retrieval, sorry, the Dunsparce. Again, a card that I already have, and again, a card that is not in standard format. And then Zero Aura, which helps with our lightning types that we're probably going to rely on. Pinkurchin, Rescue Carrier, also out of format, and by Sharp. Well, shit. Alright, we got three lousy pulls out of the box. Um, four, I guess if you count them UV. A lot of stuff that we saw was not in standard format, so um, this might be a bigger challenge than I anticipated, at least with just one box being opened. But, um... I'll be back in a minute with a deck profile and we'll see where we can go from there. Get ready for the worst deck profile you've ever seen. And here we've got 20 Pokemon, 18 trainers, and 22 energy. Um, so it's close to balanced as far as the card counts go, but um, definitely not what we wanted to see here with no usable Vs, no Radiant Pokemon, no VMAXs, V-Star, um, you know, really nothing powerful. So we have a 1-1-1 one, 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 Aron, Laron, and Agron. The Agron, however, um, 90 damage, and if it gets damaged the following turn, I put those, I put the same amount of damage on the attacking Pokemon. So, could leave my opponent in a position where they need to knock themselves out or damage themselves heavily or gust Aggron out of the active. And Heavy Impact hits hard. Um, we'll probably never get 4 energy on this Pokemon before it gets KO'd. I've got a couple switches in the deck, so I'm not worried about the 4 retreat cost. We've got 2 Chitat, which is probably one of my ideal starters in the active because I can discard a card from my hand and draw two for just one colorless energy. I'm gonna skip the Lunatone for now. We've got a Ranguru, which is another good one to start in the active, um, or maybe, you know, switch into mid game while I need to set up my board a little more. Um, but for one colorless, I can choose a supporter card from my opponent's discard and use that effect. So boss for gusting, I could use an Iono or a professor's research. Um, really depends on what my opponent's playing, but we've got one in there. We have one, one, Ponyard, and Bisharp. Um, you know, a draw two for one energy and, uh, two damage, or two, two energy, 70 damage. Um, it's not great, but it's what I had. We've got a one of, uh, Pink Urchin. The Call for Family can be helpful, and, um, to get an attack off early, you know, I may be able to get a cheesy knockout on, like, a Pidgey or a Charmander, you know, something weak. Um, we do have, scrolling down, we have the Scyther, and we do have a 1-1 one, one Scizor. Um, again, just another Steel-type attacker. Doesn't need any Steel energy, actually, but um, can do some damage in the right conditions. And then we have two Shinx, two Luxio, and one Luxray, where this Luxray, for one energy, I can do 50 and search my deck for two trainer cards. Um, you know, helpful for consistency, not doing a lot of damage, but um, if I start the game with this Luxray in my hand, I can put it as my face down active, which is helpful. Um, and then finally circling back to Lunatone and Solrock. So I've got two Solrock in the deck, and once during my turn, I can attach a Psychic Energy card from my discard to a Lunatone. And if I bench two Lunatone and two Solrock, I can be using Moon Kinesis, where this attack does 30 plus 30 for each Psychic Energy attached. So 
with 12 Psychic Energy in the deck, we could be swinging for big numbers if I can hold out long enough. Um, to cover energy, we've also got four electric for like Luxray and Pincurchin if necessary, and six for my steel type attackers. Finally, trainers, we've got two energy retrieval, one energy search, two energy switch, which could help with something like Agron or possibly even like Lunatone. We've got one friends in Sinnoh for some draw. We have Irida, which where I don't have any water type Pokemon in the deck, um, the item search is still helpful, especially when I've only got three supporters in the deck, might as well have it. One Pokeball, one Pokemon Catcher, one Potion, two Rare Candies, helping for Luxray and Agron, two Switch Cards, two Trekking Shoes to help me look through my deck, and one Friends and Hisui. So, we're looking at a sad deck with a lot of weak basics, no two prizers, but um, you know, maybe no two prizers can be my saving grace. So the goal here really is to set up possibly Lunatones and Solrox, um, you know, if necessary, get a Luxray out, um, Scizor, Bisharp, Agron, um, you know, I, I'm not looking at much for consistency. I don't have much draw support. Um, it's going to be tough. You know, the deck might start off just pretty weak for the first episode. But anyway, we're going to jump into three games on the ladder. We're going to see how we do, and I'll come back with that final grade. All right, we are back with our deck. I need to switch off my Roaring Moon deck, um, which, by the way, I just, my son and I, participated in our first ever um, like League Challenge Cup where I got top 16 using Roaring Moon and my son got second in the junior division using uh, Giratina V-Star, like Lost Box. So, ton of fun, um, met a lot of good people out there, you know, um, played some good games, made a ton of mistakes. Like it, there were three, um, three matches per round against the same person. Yes, we do want to go first. Um, Three games in 50 minutes against the same person is mentally exhausting, you know, and it you can't really mimic the pressure that you feel on Pokemon TCG Live compared to the way that you feel it in person when you hear that clock ticking. But um, I guess we're going to start with the Shinx. All right, and here we go. Duskull. So I am going to get just bodied so much in this game. Um, we can already bench a Lunatone and a Solrock. I'll bench the Scyther. I um, guess I'll just attach and pass. So not bad. At least I got some basics. You know, I got the Rare Candy and a Luxio. If I can get that um, Luxray out fast... I may be able to get some things moving, but um, I'm just not hopeful. Oh, and Dragapult is going to smoke me. That 60 damage to my bench is going to be taking a knockout probably almost every turn, except right now all my basics are 80 hit points or higher, thankfully. But Mr. Hunt Master Orion here is probably wondering what the hell he's going up against. But that's not important. We're doing this for the fun of it. Oh my god. All right, just pass your turn, buddy. Or instant charge. Yeah, there we go. All right, on to turn two. Jeez. Um, 90 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon that has a Pokemon tool attached. I'll take that. So we will evolve. I'm going to do an energy search just to start grabbing some stuff. I could do the bite on the active, but I think I've got a better chance of doing some real damage with... Uh, What is it? Shorting Spark. Because if I can land two more of those, I can knock out that um, Rotom and take two prizes. But um, yeah, getting back to the competitive play discussion, um, Roaring Moon didn't feel like the best choice because um, I went 3-2-1 in the game, three wins, two losses, one tie. Both my losses were against Raging Bolt, um, and like I got bodied hard. Like I won one out of those four games, that or one out of the five games, I guess. I got 2 0 the first time, and I got 2-1 the second time. But, I don't know, I just feel like it's not a great matchup with the numbers. You know, Roaring Moon can't one-hit KO a Raging Bolt. Um, they play, like, Bravery Charms, so it's just tough the way the numbers line up. But um, I had so much fun. It was cool to make top 16. Um, you know, got a couple prize packs, got some cool stuff. But, um, again, just a really, really fun day. 
Um, so if you're, you know, if you're getting into the game or you're playing on the ladder, maybe, um, absolutely go on the Pokemon website, look into what you can do in regards to like playing local tournaments. It is so much fun and it just, you know, makes the experience so much better. But all right, so now this is where my Pokemon start to get bodied. I'm sure my opponent doesn't even know what to, you know, put the damage counters on. But let's see. I guess we're gonna. Ha I should have attached the Psychic to Lunatone because then I could at least have done an attack. Um, I guess we're just gonna bump up the Scyther just to avoid them taking two prizes this turn, unless they have a Gust. Steel energy. Oh, all right. Well, here we go. I can do that. Attach active. Might as well just retreat. Save the switch. Rather, yeah. So I will cycle draw. I'm going to ditch the rare candy. Draw three. And that's my turn. I don't think I'm going to take a prize card here, everybody. You know, being in the Ultra League in TCG Live, like I'm playing against people running meta decks, there's no way this goes well. And yep, so my opponent is setting up to wipe my board next turn. Um, even if I draw into some stuff, um, there's a good chance they can KO Sol Rock from the bench and KO Active if they have Gust. But all right, let's see how we do. Uh, we'll trek first. Don't want an energy. We get an energy anyways. Um, going to play Friends of Sinnoh. We got a basic. Yeah, I don't think I have any outs here. I can vacuum the crystal. Don't, don't act like that's a big deal, buddy. You're not a baby. Um, I will switch so they can't KO the Sol Rock with bench damage. And I'm going to pass. This is kind of a joke. It's tough because I have some of the pieces to, you know, chain together and get a turn in. But I've done 90 damage to the bench. And there's the boss. So that's game. Yeah, good job, buddy. You beat the worst deck in Pokemon TCG Live. If I can get like a couple knockouts in any of these games, I will be marginally satisfied. But after how that first game went, I don't have high hopes. I just don't have the damage output. I don't have the draw consistency. And we may just need to go rip into some lost, um, no, Silver Tempest for a little bit more hope. Oh, but my opponent whiffed. I don't think there's any way I get 60 damage on him this turn. There's the tails, never lucky. Um, discard a special energy from your opponent's active. Uh, maybe we just attach bench and pass. Yeah, I like that. We have the E-switch, so that's an option if I feel like I, you know, attach to the wrong Pokemon. But we'll see if I get disrupted, you know, we'll see what happens. And there we go. But I will take an extra card, I will gladly get rid of a handful of energy. Oh, that's better for sure. Looks like we're playing Terrapagos. Damn, he is not getting much. He's got his basics down, but this is this should be my opportunity to start like playing the game. Um, I'm going to attach active so I can start attacking. And that way, if Scyther gets knocked out, the very least I can do is get a Psychic Energy in the discard. Maybe two if, it, you know, if I can get another turn in. There's the Terrapagos. And Jack. So there's his Knock Towels. All right, he's going to start cooking. I actually did play against this deck in my tournament over the weekend. 
Um, I got bodied so hard. Like this guy had the nuts in the first game. He had everything. And then I won game two and three just by like keeping the pressure on, keeping the aggression, getting a couple punches with one prizers. And you know, he just didn't have all the workings in games two and three. So he was a good player. He had a good deck. He played the deck right. And I just was lucky enough to have some consistency with Roaring Moon. But this is pretty much what I experienced. You know, early game, fill your bench. He's got knock towels. He's starting to jewel seek. He's getting his double turbo, so he's going to start swinging. And all right, what's he going to prime up? Oh, you bastard. All right. Yep, yeah, this is going to feel like a beatdown for sure. But. I can use Scyther and discard that double turbo, so maybe that's our win con. If there aren't that many energies in the deck, I might be able to stop him from taking all prizes, unless he may just need to start attacking, you know, he actually, I guess he could Dusk No Army to Oblivion. But if I take a couple knockouts, maybe he can. This is our chance, folks. Alright, so he's gonna lose his energy. We got a retrieval, I don't even have anything to retrieve yet. There's nothing to vacuum. I could vacuum the stadium, but there's no point. Um, I guess what I'm just gonna do is attach to Scyther, hoping he knocks it out eventually. And we're gonna mock cut. Cool. We're already off to a better, you know, we're on a better pace than we were last time. He's only got four cards in hand, too. I'm about to... Oh, if I can... I don't think there's any way I could get Scyther out of the deck. So... Or out of the discard. So I don't even think there's a way that I could continue getting rid of his double turbos, which sucks. You know, it's nice to get rid of one, but... Even if he has a couple prized, like, there's nothing stopping him from just continuing to swing with Terrapagos now. I'm not going to bump the stadium. Because that would be irresponsible. He's just going to dump his knock towels. And then Night Stretcher them back to the Hoot Hoots. Alright. We'll bring up Shanks. Another energy. Alright, here's the part where we suffer. Uh, 30 damage, 10 to self. I can E-switch. I can't even attack with these guys. Vacuum, Retrieval. Guess I just punch and hope for something better next turn. He may Iono me, he may do Professor's Research, you know, just to see new cards if he knows I'm dead drawing. What he probably doesn't know yet is that I'm dead drawing always. You know, unless I draw my two of supporters, I'm really not getting anywhere with this deck. But he doesn't know that. Oh, here we go. This could end up being a three prize turn if he gets a Dusk Noir. And that would sink me. But hey, we took a prize, everybody. First knockout of the game. Uh, let's do six. And not helpful. All right, let's see. He, if he's got the Dusk Noir, we're cooked. He's got the Ultra Ball. I'm worried he's got Candy Dusk Noir. So he can, oh, he can grab Ultra Ball Candy, Ultra Ball for Dusk Noir, or Night Stretcher for Dusk Noir if he has it. Yeah, he's got game. We got our Lux Ray though, so time to have some fun with that. And um, yeah, I mean, we might as well just bench all this. I'm not going to bench the Shinx because that's my only Lux Ray, but this Lux Ray could be my best chance to uh, get some consistency early. Um, I don't have any energy. Can't do anything. This is free retreat, too. Damn, I love this Luxray. Um, alright, we're just gonna pass. 
Next turn, I can use Friends in Sinnoh. Um, I have the Vacuum, which can help with a Bravery Charm, you know, take a cheesy knockout, because we're clearly playing Guardy. And then the one prize trade, if I can get a Lunatone cooking with two Solrock on the bench, who knows? I might just be able to hang with this deck. Uh, we're gonna draw three. I don't think we need to bench the Chitot. Um, we will just attach active. And swing. All right, what do we want? Um, probably just trekking shoes and friends. That way I can see a little more of the deck, unless I get friggin' Ionode, which I'm sure I will. if he plays candy in this build or if he's just gonna use like TM Evo or just you know crawl through the first couple turns manual retreat for the drift loon and there's the Iono which sucks because I actually had some uh, some draw and now that is at the bottom of my deck and then we got we got nothing else good here either all right I will probably Attach Psychic to Lunatone. I will absolutely abuse that friggin' Artisan, too. But maybe I attach Active, and if I get knocked out... I don't know. There's another Solrock. That's good. I was gonna Artisan for that. Why don't we take a look? This will help shuffle the deck, too. Maybe find our supporters. We could take another Lunatone. I could grab a Rangaroo and have the Iono play. I like that. Let's grab a Ranguru. I will attach. And we're just gonna seek and fang. And I'm gonna grab the same thing. I'm gonna grab friends and E switch. So if he knocks out the Lux Ray next turn, and I go active with a Ranguru, do I wanna gust vacuum? Eh, I don't need the vacuum. I could E switch. No, because I'm onto a Lunatone. No, I don't have enough to get discard. Um, we're just going to grab Shoes again. Because at least then I have a chance of discarding an energy. But this Luxray is hard carrying. It's already got some damage on the board. It's going to make it harder for them to utilize that Drift Loon when putting damage counters on it. And when they Bravery Charm it, I can just use Vacuum. Oh my god. There's no way they're just breaking this hard. Uh, we're going to bench the Aeron. Um, I guess we'll get an attachment on there. We'll Trek. Uh, don't need the Luxio. We'll take the Potion, I guess. Draw three. Ooh, do I Gust KO? And just leave... Yeah, let's try it. Because if I can knock out that Ralts and take a prize, that Drift Loon's friggin' useless anyways. Never lucky. Um, don't need an E-Switch. Just gonna take the knockout. And I guess Irida? Don't want the... Irida Pokeball, maybe. Because if I can get a heads on the Pokeball, I can go in for Agron. And then I can Irida for a candy. There's another E switch. Then I can, you know, if they don't take out Luxray or even a Rangaroo, I can E switch twice. And I could be attacking with Aggron next turn, actually, if all this works out. But that's relying on heads from Pokeball. Alright, is this any Pokemon? Yeah. So we could have the nuts. You know, we could have it all next turn. If I don't get. Alright, I can't get Ionode. I already have the candy in hand, so maybe I could gear it up for a vacuum. The counter cap. Oh, you piece of shit. And he's just gonna trap it in the active? Okay. 
I guess now what I could do is I could I could also e-switch from the Orangaroo to the Aron, act, uh, retreat, use Solrock's ability for the Lunatone, back to the Luxray, KO active. There's the Shinx, don't need that. All right, well, we're gonna try the Pokeball first. Oh my God. All right. Um, if he's just gonna take it out with friggin' gonna take it out next turn if I bring it up in the active and swing though. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna e-switch and retreat. Bring up the Luxray. I can take the KO with the Luxray. I can candy, Agron, attach, use Sun Energy, bring my energy to Lunatone, that's the only one, right? Yep. Okay, I can retrieve a metal energy. I can e-switch again. I can Irida. I don't need to Irida for anything, do I? I don't think so. We'll hold on to Irida. Um, maybe take a Psychic. take the switch in case they try to trap active again because they're moving slow right now all right and then this agron i don't want to really use the first attack but if i end up doing a counter press on something like gardevoir I, I can pretty much, I can KO anything that attacks that Agron, because they're going to be hitting big numbers unless they scale it back on a Drifloon or a Screamtail, but even then I'm taking a knockout. There's no way they don't get Gardevoir with three refinements. Oh, they... They milled the TM Devo. I feel like the TM Devo just gets rid of the Luxray and the Agron. That's like <laughs> that's like an auto win. I should have been thinking about that before. They could they could TM Devo and just wreck me. But it looks like they're not doing it. They do it to the active. I guess, yeah, they, all right, yeah. So they can Psychic Embrace, they can move some damage counters with Adrena Brain, and then they can knock out the Lux Luxray. So I guess I respect that. And now I only have one E-Switch attachment for turn, so actually I could use Agron's Counter Press. Could also use a Rangaroo, and I could Iono them. They don't have; they have one more energy. Do I go the Rangaroo Iono play? No, I, I don't need to. They're gonna. It's gonna be the difference of one card. I think I go for the Agron play and see if I can't get more energies on Lunatone. Bring up Agron. I think I just Artisan for my other Lunatone. I don't need to call for family. Maybe Scizor is a later play. But, um, all right, let's attach. Nope, we want to discard that. That's good. And we draw another one. Um, I'm just going to potion my Lunatone just to waste their turn of Adrena Braining. Um, e switch. And then I can actually grab another one. Switch 
Irida. If I Irida, what do I need? I don't need the vacuum yet. I don't need to switch. I don't have any search or disrupt left, right? Yeah, I don't think so. We're just gonna counter press, see what we can do. So if it weren't for Adrena Brain, Miracle Force would be a perfect knockout on Guardi. And I'm sure they recognize that. Oh, they're even gonna double Dory me, that sucks. Grab the energy. They still only have like one energy in discard, right? Yeah. I wonder if at this point there's a Luxio play. If they bench and charm a Drifloon or a Screamtail, I wonder if I can get that 90 damage bench snipe and take some cheeky prizes. Because Gardevoir is only gonna take one prize per turn for the next five turns. Especially if they're Adrena Braining and I stop doing damage. And then I've also got the Moon Kinesis attack lined up next turn with the ability, right? I'll be getting getting one, I can get an attachment for turn. And I think that's enough for the knockout, right? So if they're doing 190 to self and then I'm attaching for 120, yeah, I'm getting the knockout on this Guardian next turn. And I don't think they know that. Yes. All right, buddy. You're getting bodied. Please don't go AFK. Like, don't time out on me after I have a win condition. All right. Well, I don't have a win con yet, but I'm gonna be ahead in the prize trade, which is not anticipated. So we get that. We get that. They're gonna have no damage on board to Adrena Brain with, at least not yet. Um, I don't need to energy retrieval yet. I'm gonna start getting ready for the Luxio play. Um, don't need the switch, don't need the retrieval. I think we're gonna Irida just to look through the deck. Um, I could get an energy search for a psychic. Uh, vacuum, candy switch. I'm gonna grab the vacuum. And I think that's either gonna force them to Iono me, or they're just gonna have to be hesitant about the bravery charm on the Drifloon. We get two more prizes and two more energy. I have no way of discarding them which is another downside. I got no Ultra Balls in this deck. Like, I got nothing. But we're making it work right now. So they're gonna draw. Dude, they, there's no way they left this game. That's frustrating. I wanted to grab this win. I don't know what my condition would have been at this point, because they're probably gonna go Screamtail or Drifloon. They may charm it. If they charm it and leave it on the bench, I could try to find out Luxio and take a cheeky knockout. I guess I could theoretically do that twice because I do have one Shinx and Luxio. They just, what? Did they just pass? They're, they're away. That sucks. I'm, I'm getting my win here. Maybe it's cheesy, but I'm taking it. There's my Scizor. Oh yeah, they're inactive. All right, well, they were just blown away by this deck. They don't ask how, they ask how many, and that is our win with our Crown Zenith deck, everybody. We at least gave ourselves an opportunity to keep up in the race through the first half of the game. The fact that they left sucks, and I may have had no outs at that point, but, um, you know, who knows? I, I had the potential to get a win in that game, regardless of my opponent's uh, disconnection. All right, well, there you see it. You get to bear witness to the power that is Crown Zenith. Um, 
The Luxio Luxray felt cool, you know, I think it opens up some win conditions, but when there's no consistency in getting those Pokemon out of the deck and into the active and attacking, it's hard to make it work. Same with the Lunatone and Solrock, you know, I can kind of build them up on my bench and eventually punch, but there's no consistency, there's no search. Same with Aggron, I can, you know, cheese a knockout with its first attack, but there's no search and there's no consistency. That, that being said, I think the power of the deck's probably its best attribute, with its ability to hit big numbers with weak Pokemon. There's bench sniping ability with Luxio. Um, I think the consistency of the deck gets like a two. There's just, there's no search. There's none. Um, you just have to hope to top deck a supporter and draw three cards or a pair of trekking shoes. So consistency is a two. Power, I'll say is a, like a four. I mean, power between the Aggron hitting hard, the Lunatone having really the only cap being how many energy I have in the deck, and the Luxio and Luxray kind of doing damage for low attack cost while, you know, getting items into my hand. I think power is four, and I think it's it's not bad, you know? Um, synergy, a one. There's nothing. There's nothing that works well together. There's no discard for my energy to get it on a Lunatone. There's no... I'm gonna say it again, there's no search, and there's no draw. Um, the deck just sucks. So our total score, again, two, four, two, so our total is eight out of 30 possible points. But um, up next, Silver Tempest, and anything can happen from here. You know, this is just the first episode. I know it didn't go very well, but I'm excited to see where we go as we go back into Sword and Shield. If you've watched to this point, you're a friggin' legend. Um, I hope you enjoy the Sword and Shield content. I know these sets are easy to find now, but they may not be in the pretty near future. So now's the time to do it, you know, before they're expensive and before they rotate out. But thanks for watching. See you in the next one with Silver Tempest.